I had a room for a long time at Philip Glass's studio on Broadway. Uh, it was a little room. It was big enough for me at the time, but it was also great for me because his SSL room was down the hall and I could just uh, do like, I used to do pretty much MIDI programming and pre-production in my space. And then I would move all my stuff down the hall to his SSL room to actually record it and then continue doing whatever project I was doing. And that worked out really great for a while. Uh, and then it began to change in a couple of ways. First, in that I got really into Logic Audio and recording things digitally as that became feasible to do. Uh, the first time I did that was on uh, David Bowie's Earthling record. And so it became clear that like I didn't just have to program, I could actually record in this thing. So that began to change the way I looked at sort of my little production studio. Like, wow, I don't have to just, you know, this isn't, this isn't just a warm-up anymore, like I can actually do stuff. <laughs> um, and then it began to change uh, also in that uh, I moved into this space around 1999. And so I was working on a record in 2000 with, uh, with Bowie and, and we needed to do some vocals. And we were doing it all again in Logic and he suggested doing it here because why not? It was great, and they all loved it. And I just was like, wow, you know, because there's a terrace, there's light, the neighborhood's cool. And I thought, if they like it, you know, and they're really, you know, people I really respect, maybe there's a little thing here, you know. And, and after that, I began to do more and more little things here and bring people here. And everybody said, wow, this is really, it's a creative little space, and it feels great. I'm like, okay, because I always thought I would graduate to my own, real studio and I grew up and uh, I don't know I guess I never grew up <laughs> and, and over time as well like with the changing economy of of the music industry it, it became apparent that I needed to do more and more finished work on my own away from a real studio and how am I going to do that uh, so I'd say around 2006 or so I began to in my head shop around for some kind of desk not a big desk but something something that i could at least put all my tracks through so i started to look around and what i did was i made a little session of a song that i had and i made it so that like if i brought up this song in pro tools on any desk set the faders to zero and recorded that as a mix i would get the sound of this desk and then i could compare it to other other places where I'd done the same thing. And I was starting to take little gigs where it's like, oh, you've got that API 16 input. Okay, I'll do a week of tracking there. I can kind of feel it out. I can do my little test and I'll get another, you know, impression of it. And I did it with a few others like that, a few other places. I did it on an SSL as kind of a control as well as the all right, you know. And I was doing this for a couple years. And it was all okay, but it's like, well, you know, does this sound like $40,000 better than what I have? It sounds about $5,000 better than what I have. I'm not going to go for that, right? And I kept going around with that until 2009, after AES, when I think it was Steve Rosenthal over at the Magic Shop gave me a call and he said, you know, I have this desk over here. Maybe you want to come and, and, and hear it. And he told me what it was. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I went over there. And this was an instance of me kind of knowing in about five minutes that, oh, wow, okay, I think I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I found, you know, I think I found it. And it was an absolute revelation. <laughs>